Welcome to the online video homework for topic 6.16, decarboxylation and synthetic applications. Recommended reading to complete prior to attempting this homework would be lesson 6.16 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2018 by Professors Tennyson, Hujiri, and Smith. The first skill we need to acquire in this particular topic is to recognize when decarboxylation can happen. And one type of question you might be faced with would be one like this. It simply asks you which will decarboxylate fastest upon heating. And to address this kind of problem, you first have to see what the general mechanism for decarboxylation is. So if we take a look at that, you need to have a carboxylic acid unit that can leave as a CO2. And in order to facilitate that, you have to have another carbonyl unit and between those two carbonyl functionalities, you should only have one carbon, and that carbon will be here, and that carbon will carry through after tautomerization to become, in this case, a ketone. But the minimal requirement to be able to carry out a decarboxylation like this would be to have a carboxylic acid at unit one and a different carbonyl unit at position three. It could be a ketone, another carboxylic acid, an ester, and that would work for decarboxylation. So when we're looking at a question like this, we're really looking for that minimal unit that might be part of a more complicated structure. If we take a look at our first possible decarboxylation substrate, we notice that there is an ester here, not a carboxylic acid. So without any previous reactions to convert that ester into a carboxylic acid, it won't be able to leave as a CO2. So we rule that unit out. If we take a look at the substrate on the far right, we do have a carboxylic acid unit that could be decarboxylated, but we see one, two carbons in between those two carbonyl units, whereas there should only be one carbon in between the two carbonyl carbons. So finally, in our last example, we see an example of a unit that is correct for decarboxylation. We see a carboxylic acid on the left here, that can leave as a CO2. There's one intervening carbon and then another carbonyl unit. That will be able to undergo decarboxylation. Often in a practical laboratory setting, you may have a more complicated molecule that has a variety of different carbonyl bearing functional groups. And you'll want to be able to assess the potential thermal stability of that unit. So in this case, we're asked which of the carboxylic acids could be lost as carbon dioxide if this molecule was heated. So what would the first decomposition of this molecule be? So there are three carboxylic acid units, which I've called one, two, and three. Those are the three that could potentially leave as carbon dioxide. This is a carbonyl as well, but it's a ketone. A ketone can't leave as carbon dioxide, it only has one oxygen. And we keep in the minimum requirements for being able to carry out the general decarboxylation mechanism. You need to have your carboxylic acid, one intervening carbon, and then another carbonyl unit. So if we take a look at carboxylic acid one, and we say, well, here's our carbonyl, could leave as a CO2, one, two carbons before we get to another carbonyl unit. So that is too far away from the next carbonyl unit to undergo the mechanism. The second one, what we've called two is also too far away. If I look at that, there's one carbon, two carbons before we reach the next carbonyl. Finally, when we identify the correct unit, we see the carboxylic acid, which is capable of losing a CO2, one carbon in between, and then another carbonyl. And that corresponds to the minimum required unit for decarboxylation that we see up here in the box on the right. Now that we're able to identify the units within a more complicated molecular structure that are capable of undergoing decarboxylation, we can start to look at some synthetic applications. And this question has a relatively simple molecule and it asks us what are the major organic products of this reaction? Well, we don't have any carboxylic acids yet, so our first thought shouldn't be decarboxylation. What we should think about is when we have this ester moiety, we should consider acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis. And when that occurs, we will have a carboxylic acid. And the hydrolysis product is methanol in this case because there's a methyl group there. Once we have that 
carboxylic acid, we then might think about the possibility of decarboxylation. And we would again look for this common unit for decarboxylation to be possible, and we identify a structure just like that in this molecule. So if we keep heating this, we will be able to decarboxylate, and we will get the carbon dioxide. This carbon right here, after you lose this as CO2, and you've lost this as methanol, you have this carbon that's still here, so that this piece stays behind as a ketone. There are two specific industrially important applications that involve decarboxylation as one step uh, that are discussed in the primer. And here's an example of the first one. This is asking us what the major organic products of this sequence would be, and it's a three-step sequence. This is an example of an acetoacetic ester synthesis. This is your acetoacetic ester. And one step at a time, we want to figure out what each of these reagents does. So first, we should recognize that sodium ethoxide is a strong base. And whenever we see the strong base, we should suspect that it would deprotonate the most acidic site in the molecule. For carbonyls, we know that you can deprotonate alpha positions. And there are two potential alpha positions to be deprotonated here. This one is much more acidic because it's alpha to both of these two carbonyl units. This one is only alpha to the ketone. So we will generate this enolate initially. And we've then completed step one. Step two is this bromopropane, and I've redrawn that reagent here. The enolate will act as a nucleophile to do an SN2 reaction with that primary alkyl bromide, and that will add one, two, three carbons attached to this carbon that's already here. And that product will look like this. So there are the new one, two, three, shown in blue, carried through from that step. Now we've completed step one, make the enolate step two, provide a substrate for the SN2 reaction. The third step is aqueous acid, H3O+, and heating to 125 degrees centigrade. Well, when we have this aqueous acid, we should think about the ester undergoing acid-catalyzed ester hydrolysis, and when that occurs, we'll get a carboxylic acid unit here, and the ethanol came from this unit here. Now, if we keep heating this, we have a high enough temperature and an appropriate unit, a carboxylic acid, one carbon in between the carboxylic acid and the other carbonyl. That's the minimum required functional unit to undergo thermal decarboxylation. So the carboxylic acid unit will come off as CO2, that's there. Uh, the ethanol is still floating around the solution that got hydrolyzed off in the ester hydrolysis step. And then this unit breaks off and that provides us with this ketone here. A very similar problem is shown on this slide. Provide the reagents necessary to carry out this target synthesis. So instead of asking us to provide the product, here we're being shown the, what the product is and asked what reagents we need to get there. So we should recognize that this is a malonic ester synthesis. This is your malonic ester. And we need to then evaluate, well, which pieces of the molecule do we need to add to get to this product? Which pieces of the starting material do we have to remove? And if we do that evaluation highlighted in blue, we can see this whole piece is gone in the product. It has to be removed in part of our plant synthesis. If we look over at the product, this piece needs to be added. And we can identify this carbon to which this little red chain is added is the same as this carbon here. So that carbon is maintained, it's not removed, but we need to add three carbons in this small chain at some step in our plant synthesis. Well, this chain could be added by an SN2 reaction if we had an enolate here. So thinking about making this bond, if this had a leaving group on it, and this was a nucleophile, we could make that new bond by an SN2 reaction. Now how do we remove this piece from the starting material? Well, we can remove CO2, this piece, only by doing decarboxylation. That's the only reaction we know where we can remove an entire carbonyl unit. But we can't just heat this up to decarboxylate it. We don't have the carboxylic acid yet. So we'd have to first figure out a way to make the ester into a carboxylic acid. And we can do that by ester hydrolysis to remove this as ethanol. 
So now we have some ideas as to how we can add the required pieces to the product and remove the pieces from the reagent that are necessary. So our planned synthesis should remind you of what we did in the previous problem. We would add a strong base because we need a nucleophile if we're going to do that SN2 reaction we mentioned. We need this compound because we've added one, two, three carbons. We need a three carbon chain with a leaving group, at which point we would have this product. Now if we start heating this up in aqueous acid as indicated in the second step, we're going to convert those esters to carboxylic acids first. Then we can do a decarboxylation and that will remove this as carbon dioxide and we'll be left with our final product which has the three new carbons as well as this carbon which is right here. And that'll be a good way to prepare this target using the malonic ester synthesis. Here's a slightly more complicated task. We're trying to again complete a malonic ester synthesis, but we're trying to make this compound. And if we take a look at the pieces that we need to add, we need to add somehow this piece, and we need to remove this piece from the starting material. Now we've already seen a couple problems where we have a similar scenario, but one thing we have to be careful about is that this carbon right here is going to be here in the product. So we need to add a total of one, two, three, four carbons. But how are we going to accomplish this? Well, we saw in the past couple problems that it's pretty easy to remove this unit as ethanol when we use acid catalyzed ester hydrolysis. Once that becomes a carboxylic acid, we could remove this part as CO2, carbon dioxide. And then we have to figure out how we're going to add this unit onto that alpha carbon in the center. In the previous couple problems, we used an SN2 reaction. But this is a little bit different because now we have to remove two alpha protons from that carbon. And we need to make two new bonds that were not present in the starting material. So how are we going to remove two alpha protons and make two new carbon-carbon bonds? Well, one idea would be to use a base to remove both of these. You'd need to add base twice, one to remove each one. And we would need two leaving groups and one, two, three, four carbons that need to be added. One, two, three, four. So that would be a viable strategy. And let's look at the type of reagents we would need to accomplish that. If we add base, we're going to generate the enolate here by removing the most acidic proton, just like in the other cases. And now we have our chain with two bromo leaving groups. That's this second step. And we're going to be able to do one SNT reaction because we only have one nucleophile. And that leads to this product. Well, if we want to do the second SNT reaction to make a second bond, you see we've already made one bond to the new chain of four carbons. That's these four shown here. We're going to have to generate a nucleophile again by using this base to remove this hydrogen to leave a negative charge here. Then we can do the intramolecular SN2 reaction to close that ring. Now that will get us over to this species. And then we can do the hydrolysis to make these both into carboxylic acids and lose two equivalents of methanol. And then as we continue to heat this to higher than 100 centigrade, we will be able to decarboxylate by removal of one of these carboxylic acid units. And that would leave us with the target product.